The movie begins with a middle-aged woman named Lenora who's wearing her red jacket preparing to go out for a morning jog. As she runs out of her house a narrator in the background explains that most murders in the world are motivated by love and are rarely random. Meanwhile we can see Lenore's husband Christian waiting in a van filled with hatred for her. As soon as Lenora runs past him he starts the van and begins chasing her. Soon he hits her from behind and runs the van over her. The story then shifts to an old detective narrating this murder case to his daughter during lunch. The detective is convinced of Christian's guilt and mentions that he can't stop thinking about the case. He then reminds his daughter about how dangerous love can be, and resumes the story taking us three days back in time before the murder occurred. That night as Lenora sleeping Christian's phone starts beeping at 3 am disturbing her sleep. At first Christian tries to lie claiming it's work-related, but as the beeping continues Lenore insists on seeing who's messaging him at such an odd hour. However Christian becomes defensive and refuses to show her his phone, sparking suspicious that he might be hiding something possibly having an affair. When she attempts to take the phone from him Christian reacts strongly and throws it against the wall breaking it. The story then delves into the background of our main characters providing insight into their lives. Christian is a co-founder of a construction company which he started with his friend Peter. On the other hand Lenora was once a renowned musician but she had to give up her promising careers of violinist to take care of their sick son Johan. The next morning Lenora returns from her jog and extends an apology to Christian for their fight the previous night. She kisses him and he seems to take the situation lightly. Lenore then offers to drive their son Johan to school while Christian heads to work secretly carrying the broken phone in his pocket. At the construction site Christian meets his friend Peter who informs him about the IRS wanting to review the company's accounts due to some suspicious deals. Peter says to Christian that everything will be okay, and they exchange playful banter. Christian then sets out to find Xenia the architect. He meets her in a private room and the two clearly have a deep affection for each other. It's revealed that Xenia was the one sent the late night message and Christian explains that he couldn't read it as it led to a quarrel with his wife. This revelation anchors Xenia and she gives Christian an ultimatum demanding that he chooses between her and his wife. Christian's torn between his love for Xenia and his responsibility as a father to his recovering son Johan. He tries to handle the situation diplomatically but it disappoints Xenia and she walks away in frustration. Meanwhile Lenore drives Johan to school and he requests a stop to pick up his friend Martha. While observing the two in the back seat Lenore seems to suspect that they're more than just best friends. After dropping off Johan and Martha Lenore visits a local car wash and reluctantly purchases a discount card to save money. Back at home she tries to access Christian's phone records but to no avail. While going through his Facebook friends list she comes across Xenia's profile and finds several pictures of her and Christian at work looking happy together. This raises her suspicions and she starts feeling that something isn't right. But despite her doubts Lenore prepares to attend an event organized by her husband's company. Later when Christian returns home she tries to be affectionate and romantic but he ignores her and rushes to take a bath. Despite the tension and growing suspicion between them Christian and Lenora attend his work event. That night during the event Lenore's jealousy reaches new heights as she witnesses. Christian's showering Xenia with lavish compliments for her outstanding work at the company. Later while everyone's celebrating Lenora spots Xenia and Christian sneaking upstairs and decides to follow them to her dismay. She catches them in an intimate encounter and Xenia even smiles at her while Christian remains oblivious to his wife's presence. The next morning Christian collaborates with his neighbor Kim to build a bonfire for the upcoming Midsummer Festival. During their conversation the topic of divorce arises as Christian contemplates ending his marriage. Drawing from his own experience Kim advises Christian to be honest with Lenora about his feelings. However before Christian can bring the subject up with his wife, Lenora confronts him and asks if he started seeing someone else. Christian finally finds the courage to sit down with Lenora and confesses that he no longer wants to stay married. Unable to keep her own secret any longer Lenora reveals she saw him with Xenia at the office the previous day. This revelation triggers a dramatic confrontation as Lenora expresses her frustration and anger having sacrificed her own career for their sick son over the past two decades and now facing the possibility of being left with nothing. If they divorce she further escalates the situation by threatening to report Christian to the police for committing fraud in his business. During their discussion Lenore exposes Christian's fraudulent financial dealings, particularly how he manipulated the company's stock to secure money for Johan's treatment. She makes it clear that she's already sought legal advice and warns Christian that if he leaves she could implicate him as an accomplice in the fraud. Lenora holds this information like a silver bullet ready to use it to protect herself and their family. 
Later at his workplace Christian discusses the situation with his friend Peter, but finding a way to rectify the fraudulent financial issues proves challenging. Later when meeting with Xenia he lies about ending things with his wife. This convinces her and she decides to take Christian to meet her parents taking their relationship to new heights. The next day when Christian leaves home Lenore decides to follow him who's on his way to meet her old best friend Cassandra. Cassandra warns Christian that Lenore is not someone you can just walk away from. She recounts an incident involving Mike one of Lenore's ex-partners who died in a mysterious cliff accident. Armed with his new information Christian contacts Sonia Mike's former lover at the time of his death. Sonia also believes that Lenora is responsible for Mike's demise however she was never considered a suspect due to her alibi of being at music practice which was confirmed by her teacher. Later Christian visits Xenia parents and meets her mother all while being observed from a distance by Lenora. Back at home Christian confronts Lenore about the accusations but she dismisses them leading to a heated argument where she claims the house and their son. She then throws him out of the house and Christian drives away in his car in a state of desperation. Christian devises a plan to cause harm to Lenora. He swaps his car with one of the company's white vans and hides behind trees along her jogging route. The following morning as soon as he spots her jogging he accelerates the van and runs her over. After the gruesome act he sneaks back into the office to create an alibi pretending he's been working the whole time. Afterward Christian returns home and consumed by guilt avoids looking at his son. He also cries in the shower and later has a drink to cope. However to his shock while he's drinking Lenora returns home unharmed and unaware of what he's done. She casually talks about taking a new jogging route making Christian realize he must have hit the wrong person. He then lies to her pretending he still wants to be with her. The next morning the duo learns of a hit and run accident near Lenora's jogging route where a mother of three was killed. During Johan's graduation party a detective arrives and interviews Christian. Fearing the truth Christian lies claiming he was working at the office during the incident. Overwhelmed with guilt Christian visits the site of the accident and reads the messages left by the victims. He also sees the news reports suggesting the perpetrator might have fled the country so he changes his mind and goes home. Meanwhile Lenore begins to suspect Christian when she discovers her car wash card was used on the day of the hit and run. She later confronts him with evidence. One of his vans captured in the CCTV camera of the car wash center. With this Lenore comes to the distressing realization that she was his target in the accident. Right then Johan arrives noticing something's wrong but Christian sends him away. He then tries to explain but Lenora calls the detective to report him. However before she can say anything he snatches the phone away and tells her that he has some information about the Romanian number plate seen at the scene. Seizing the opportunity Lenora rushes out of the house. Christian tries to calm her down but she takes her phone and leaves. In his confusion Christian attempts to call Xenia but she doesn't answer. Shortly after the detectives visit their house to gather more information. Later that night Lenore and Christian made it a fancy restaurant for dinner date a composed and calculated. Lenora then unveils her plan. She won't report him for any of his crimes but she demands he kills Xenia and removes her from getting into their relationship. Lenora feels unsafe around Christian and believes that committing a crime together will further bond them. Initially Christian refuses to do so but when Lenore discloses that she was the one who killed Mike and framed an alibi by recording herself playing the violin while her teacher was away he gets afraid and agrees. Christian also decides to use this template for their plan to eliminate Xenia. Together they build their alibi by booking a trip that will ensure people see them together. As a part of their plan the couple decides to go on vacation and stay at a hotel as an alibi while Christian carries out the task of murdering Xenia and making it look like a robbery. At night he sneaks down the balcony and visits Xenia's house but she turns him away as he's been avoiding her. Christian persists and breaks into her home expressing his love for her. Meanwhile Lenner's at the hotel pretending to make a call to room service and casually mentioning that her husband is in the shower. She then uses Christian's phone to send a text to Xenia pretending to be him ending their relationship. When the text arrives Christian distracts Xenia and kisses her to keep her away from her phone. At the same time Lenore plays a voice recording of Christian's voice to make it seem like they're having a, a conversation while she's in the bathroom. Unaware of his wife's sinister plan Christian ends up spending an intimate night with Xenia instead of killing her. Later when Lenore realizes that her husband is taking more time she decides to investigate on her own. Following this when Xenia goes to the bathroom Lenora follows her and fatally stabs her in the gut. Hearing her scream Christian goes to the bathroom only to discover a bloody Lenora standing over Zinnia's lifeless body. Days later Zinnia's reported missing by her neighbors but there's no evidence of her body or any DNA or fingerprints in her home. 
The police retrieve the latest text message on Xenia's phone supposedly from Christian and it leads them to investigate the couple's house. There the couple tells them that they were at a spa that night and have receipts to prove it. The detective however is suspicious and sends hounds to search the nearby woods for a body. Meanwhile the whole community is preparing to celebrate the midsummer festival. Lenora urges Christian to light up on fire in the middle of the lake. The police hounds are also in the woods and suddenly they start barking near the lake. Hearing the barks Christian struggles to light the bonfire but eventually he succeeds. Here when he looks at the bonfire through binoculars it's revealed that Xenia's body is hidden inside it. After the incident the family decides to sell their house and move away. However the detective remains convinced of Christian's guilt though he was never convicted due to a lack of evidence. The film ends with a haunting shot of Zinnia's bones at the bottom of the river and it becomes clear that the case remains unresolved leaving a lingering sense of unease and mystery for everyone.